Hey everyone, Two Angry Frogs here with AdQ, and today we're going to show you how to get the Frost Brood Vanquisher mount from Ice Crown Citadel. The Frost Brood is an awesome looking mount, and for all the Death Knights out there, it fits the fantasy perfectly. And you can bet this one will get dynamic flight in the War Within. So what do we need to do to get this mount? We'll show you everything you need to know to run through Ice Crown Citadel, and what is required to complete each achievement. Honestly, it is one of the easier mounts to get and is easily soloable for anyone level 70 in Dragonflight. But before we begin, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you always know what we're up to next. And thank you to everyone for your support. Now, let's get into it. So before we head to Ice Crown Citadel, there are a couple of important things to note. First, if you are not a healer, you will need a way to heal Valithria Dreamwalker. Healing is by far the easiest way to gain the achievement for this raid boss. There are multiple ways we can address this as non-healers, so grab Wilder Cloth Bandages, the Engineering Item Pump Action Bandage Gun, or if you have it, the Heart of Azeroth from BFA with the Spirit of Preservation, the Crucible of Flame, or Lifebinder's Invocation. For Hunters, you can also use the Spirit Mend ability from your Spirit Beast. Second, before entering, we need to make sure that the raid is set to Heroic 10 Player. Some of the achievements as part of the meta achievement are required to be completed in heroic 10 player mode. We will first cover the route to take through Ice Crown Citadel. The route is linear for the most part, with the optional routes being in the upper reaches, including the Plague Works, Crimson Hall, and Frostwing Halls. From the entrance, we'll head through the lower spire, and once we have defeated Lady Death Whisper, take the platform from her location to the gunship. After the gunship scenario is defeated, you'll land at Deathbringer's Rise. Once Deathbringer Sourfang is defeated, walk directly behind him and you will be teleported to the Upper Reaches. In the Upper Reaches, we'll complete the Plague Works to the west and then head north to the Crimson Halls. Once we have defeated the Blood Prince Council and Blood Queen Lanathel, we head east to Frostwing Halls. Frostwing Halls including Valithria Dreamwalker and Sindragosa. After all winks have been completed, we have access to the Frozen Throne through the teleporter in the middle of the room in the Upper Reaches. To get to Ice Crown Citadel, we will take the Dalaran Portal and the Pathfinder's Den in Orgrimmar for the Wizard's Sanctum in Stormwind. Once in Dalaran, head north to Ice Crown. The meta achievement that we are looking to complete is Glory of the Ice Crown Raider. So let's walk through what is required for each boss. When you first enter the raid, Lord Marogar will be directly straight from the entrance. We need to complete the achievement Bone. Marogar is the first of multiple bosses in the raid that the achievement can be completed by simply one-shotting the boss. So no strategy here other than defeating the boss. We will move from Marogar up the ramp around either side of the boss room and head for Lady Death Whisper. For the achievement full house, we want to wait for the portals during phase one of the fight. We need to wait until we have all five types of cultists spawned from the portals. These will be the Deformed Fanatic, Reanimated Fanatic, Reanimated Adherent, Cult Fanatic, and Cult Adherent. Once all five types have spawned, defeat the boss while the adds are alive. From Lady Death Whisper, take the platform up to the Rampart of Skulls. We will board the gunship and talk to High Overlord Sourfang for Horde, or Murad and Bronzebeard for Alliance, and tell them that our party is ready to go. For this encounter, we will need to complete the achievement, I'm on a boat. The easiest way to complete this solo is to jump into a turret as soon as they are available. You can hit the opposite gunship with enough damage so that it does not require you jumping to the other ship. Simply kill off any adds that show up on your ship when the turrets are frozen and that will complete the achievement. For the next boss, Deathbringer Sourfang, we need to complete the achievement I've gone and made a mess. Once you leave the boat, talk to High Overlord Sourfang or Murd and Bronzebeard and let him know that you are ready. After a short dialogue, Deathbringer Sourfang will become attackable. Sourfang is another simple one-shot achievement. Simply defeat the boss and we'll head to the Plague Works through the exit in the back of the boss room. In the Plague Works, we'll start with defeating Festergut and Rotface. Both of these, like Marogar, are one-shot achievements. After defeating these two, we earn the achievements Flu Shot Shortage and Dancing with Oozes. In each of these rooms, after defeating the boss, make sure to activate the Crank Wheel. After both have been activated, the entrance to Professor Putricide will be open. For the Professor, we want to get the achievement Nausea, Heartburn, and Digestion. As with the other two bosses in the Plague's work, simply one-shot the Professor and you receive the achievement. 
We'll move from the Plague Works to the Crimson Hall to the north. We first encounter the Blood Prince Council to get the achievement, the Orb Whisperer. As with the majority of bosses in this raid, this is a simple one-shot, so defeat the boss and receive the achievement. Blood Queen Lanithel will take two runs to complete the achievement. For the once bitten, twice shy achievement, you will need to kill her both as a vampire and as a non-vampire. To defeat her as a non-vampire, it is a simple one-shot. However, you must wait until a few seconds in combat to get credit for defeating her as a non-vampire. If you one-shot her prior to gaining aggro, you will not get credit. For the vampire version, you'll need to wait for about 15 seconds after the encounter starts, and she will cast Vampiric Bite, which will turn you into a vampire for the remainder of the fight. Defeat her at this point, and along with your first non-vampiric kill, you will receive the achievement. Note, it is very important for this fight to disable everything that might proc damage, including gear, talents, and so on, so you do not kill her prior to being turned into a vampire. Also note that this is a personal achievement, so both kills must be done on the same character. From Lanithel, we will head east to the Frostwing Halls. Our first boss in this area is Valithria Dreamwalker, and we will need to heal her to 100% to complete the achievement Portal Jockey. Although the text of the achievement states to enter all portals, that cannot be completed by a solo player, because once you enter a portal, the encounter resets since there are no players on the other side of the portals. If you are not a healing class, there are abilities that enable us to heal her. For Beast Mastery Hunter, for example, you can use your Spirit Beast by targeting Valithria and using your Spirit Mend ability. You can also use several other items, including Wilder Cloth Bandages, the Engineering Item Pump Action Bandage Gun, and so on. After completing Valithria, we'll head straight to the exit into the second Frostwing Halls area where we will defeat Sindragosa. Defeat Ryan Fang and Spine Stalker, and Sindragosa will come to the ground. Sindragosa presents another one-shot achievement, All You Can Eat, that is received after defeating her, and with that, we're off to the Lich King. We reach the Lich King by heading back into the upper reaches. In the middle of the room is a portal that will teleport us to the Frozen Throne. After all of this time, this place honestly is still incredible. Talk to Tyrion Fordring to begin the dialogue between Tyrion and Arthas. Before the dialogue ends, you will want to head slightly up the stairs and wait. This area will prevent you from being yeeted off the platform by the Lich King's Shadow Traps. For the achievement, been waiting a long time for this, you need to get 30 stacks of Necrotic Plague. You will see the Necrotic Plague fall off of you, but continue to wait and it will stack over time. When it falls off, it jumps on the Drudge Ghouls or the Shambling Horrors, and when they die with the debuff, it gains a stack and jumps to another. It may take a few minutes, but eventually you will be debuffed with 30 plus stacks. At this point, hit the Lich King so he is at one health, finish watching the dialogue, and when the dialogue finishes and the Lich King is defeated, you will be gifted with this amazing mount. The Frostbrood Vanquisher is a great looking mount and is easily obtained within a very short amount of time. It is also a great mount to grab for anyone who is looking to run old content solo. And if you want to grab a reskin of the mount, because two mounts are better than one, you can get the same meta achievement on Heroic 25 player. Let us know what you think down below in the comments, and if there's anything you would like to see in future videos. And everyone, have a great day.